Hi folks, this is Jay. Well, okay, today we're having uh, a Bible study uh, on the book of Ruth, and I hope this is a blessing to you. It's good to be with you. Now let's come before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you, and we thank you for your grace, and we give you the praise and the glory today. And Father, we confess all our failure and all our sin. And uh, we acknowledge our guilt and our failure today. And we acknowledge, Lord, how much we need you today, how much we need your grace, and uh, how much we need your care. And so, Father, I just pray for your forgiveness today, and I pray for your cleansing. And, uh, Father, I just pray as we look at your word, and as we meditate and pray today, that you be with us today in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. So uh, we're looking at uh, the book of Ruth, and if you'd like to turn to the book of Ruth, I'm using the King James, uh, for those who are younger, um, I know it's a bit difficult for you, but uh, I just feel comfortable on Bible reading is just the King James, but I use other Bible translations, uh, so if it's a little bit difficult for you sometimes, please forgive me. Um, so we'll read uh, Ruth chapter 1 and then I'll give you my thoughts about the book and uh, we'll take it from there. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. A certain man of Bethlehem Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons and the name of the man was Amalek, and the name of the wife was Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Mahon, and Chilion, and Epiphrites of Bethlehem, Judah. They came into the country of Moab and continued there, and Amalek, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons, and they took them one, the name of the one, Orpha, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Mahon and Chilion died, also both of them and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she came, then she rose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. When she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, they went on their way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, and you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee, and return again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? that they may be your husbands. Turn again, my daughters, so um, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, should also bear sons, would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sake, that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave after thee, for whither thou goest I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem, and and it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Maria. 
for the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord had brought me home again empty. Why then call me Naomi, seeing the Lord had testified against me? And so Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, turned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. So that's uh, the first chapter, and that's what we're looking at, is the whole book, but we just had a chapter there that would just give us a, a break into the uh, into the book. So again, let's come before the Lord, just have some time of prayer, and then we'll get into the study. Well, God, we just come to you today, and again, we acknowledge our sin, and oh well, God, we just come weak and frail, and just needing your help and strength today. So God, we come in our weakness. We come in our frailty. And we come in our need of you. And so, when we confess every sin, we confess every failure, every weakness, every need of you. So God, we just praise you and thank you for today and we confess all the weakness of our hearts. We confess all our need of you, all our need of your grace and care. And so God, I just praise you and thank you for this day and just ask you for forgiveness today and your help and strength. And Oh God, we just give you the prayers and we give you the glory today and we give you the honour. And uh, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your care. And so, Father, I just pray these thoughts would be a blessing to all of us in your name and for your glory. Amen. If you turn to uh, Ruth... Uh, first of all, we'll just talk about the book. What's the book about? Well, basically, it's just at the end of the time of the book of Judges. You remember that was about a 450-year period after the time of Joshua. Uh, a key verse would be, and they did what was right in their own eyes. It was a kind of a up-and-down kind of lawless type of time of history. There were judges, leaders who came and rose up to defend the people of God, such as Samson, such as uh, Deborah, etc. So at the end of the book of Judges, um, we get a time where there is a famine in Bethlehem, and Ruth and her, fa and, and her husband and two sons leave to go to Moab. There, uh, Ruth, uh, Naomi's uh, two sons marry Moabite women, which is Ruth and her sister. Or Orpha, and then um, they then um, the Naomi's husband dies, and her two sons die, and so Naomi's just left with her two daughters-in-law. Orpha leaves, and Ruth stays and says, "Your God is my God." At that point, they go back to Bethlehem and there is a harvest and Ruth begins to glean in the field as you can see in the picture as she does that she meets a man called Boaz Boaz happens to be a relative of Naomi and Naomi is delighted that she met this Boaz well Boaz takes pity on Ruth and gives her food and eventually uh, indicates he'd like to marry her and she indicates he'd like to marry him he ask anybody if they want to buy the family land of Naomi because if they did they would have the right to marry Ruth nobody wanted to so he says he will, will redeem the land and he ends up marrying Ruth and they have a baby that's basically the uh, story and it ends with um, Naomi holding the baby a grandchild that Ruth has bore, and that grandchild became the descendant of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's kind of a rough outline of the book. 
Um, one writer has said, the book demonstrates that God responds to his people's cry and he cares for them. He cares for the outcast of society. So first of all, if we turn to Ruth chapter 1 verse 20, uh, it says, And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Naomi, when she lost her husband and she lost her two sons, she naturally felt that she was abandoned and that the future was bleak. She was pes uh, pessimistic about the future. She, she didn't look forward to the future. And sometimes we can be like that. Sometimes we can have difficult things happen to us and, and not feel that the future has got anything to offer us. But in the Word of God it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind in Romans 12. And God wants us to think positive thoughts about him, believe in his goodness that he will bless and guide us. So, if you're tempted to dark thoughts about the future today, remember that God is you will bless. If you turn to Ruth chapter 2 verse 7 we read and she said I pray let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves so she came and had continued uh, and she said I pray you let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves so she came and had continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house then Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not my daughter? Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not my daughter? Go not glean in, in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Now the thing that's there is Ruth goes, she's destitute, to the field and as you can see in the picture she picks what she can from the field so that she can survive she does what she can in a crisis when we feel we don't know which way to go just do what you can and God will take over and bless then if you turn to uh, Ruth chapter 2 verse 10 then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him why have I found grace in thy eyes that thou should take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. So she says this to Boaz, and Boaz just gives her more grain. And that's a picture of Christ. We often come to Christ feeling we're lost, feeling we've got nothing to offer. And yet God bestows us the grace and mercy through Jesus Christ. We come empty with nothing and wonder what on earth God can do for us or can we ever get close to God? And we find, as we read uh, the prodigal son in Luke 15, he says, And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods um, that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his, his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey unto a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants are by fathers of bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and before thee I am no more worthy to be called thy son. I have servants. And he rose and came to the father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father said, saw him, and had compassion, ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and, and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatty calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and began to be merry. So the father ran to the son, put a ring on his finger, and restored him. 
Uh, yet the son had sown all and squandered everything he had. That's a picture of you and me. We can squander our, our ki the God's kindness to us, and yet God will have us back if we turn and we repent. The next thing I'd like to look at is Ruth chapter 2 verse 11 and it said, And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thy husband, and how that how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not hereafter. Now, what I like about this is that Boaz knows about what Ruth has done, the good deeds that Ruth has done. By sticking by Naomi in a crisis, by thinking about Naomi and not herself, by thinking about the glory of God and not herself. And we learn a lesson here that good deeds are never forgotten. You know, you can do a good deed and not, not be praised. Men cannot see it and... Nobody seems to see what you've done, but God sees it. He says, if you do good deeds, God will bless and God will guide and God will not forget. He will not forget your deed, your good deed. That's just a few little thoughts of, of the book. What I want to just say now is God met the need of Ruth, met the need of Naomi. And I just want to say that God will be with you. That the whole book of Ruth is about God's prov providence, God's provision, God's help. God was with Ruth and Naomi in a very, very difficult situation. And God will be with you in a very, very difficult situation. If you turn to Psalm 91, verse 1, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High of the Almighty. God will be with you as you dwell with him and turn to him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for... My strength is made perfect in weakness, most gladly, therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Even when we're weak, God will be with us and help us. If you turn to Proverbs chapter 18, 10. Proverbs 18, 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it and is safe. Well, God is a strong tower, we can go for help and comfort and strength. Re uh, Lamentations 3.24 Lamentations 3.24 The Lord is my portion, said my Lord, so, uh, sorry, the Lord is my portion, said my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is your portion, he will help you. Isaiah 63, 9. Isaiah 63, 9. It says, In all their afflictions he was afflicted, and the angel of the present saved them in the love and in his pity he redeemed them and he bore them and carried them all the days to strengthen you, redeem you, help you, give you strength, my friend. Psalm 23, 5. You, pre you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, thou anoint my head with oil, my cup overflow. Hebrews thirteen five. Hebrews thirteen five. 
says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. You turn to Psalm 42 verse 1. Psalm 42, verse 1. As a heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember thee things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone with the multitude, and I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holiday. Why art thou cast down, or down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I will yet praise him for the help of the continents. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of the Jordan and of the Hemorites and the hill Mitzah. Romans 8, 33. Romans 8 um, 33 he says who shall lay the thing to the charge of God's elect it is God that justifieth who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died ye that is risen again who is given at the right hand of God who shall make intercession for us he's praying for us he's with us he's on our side and then it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God will be with you, he'll support you, he'll strengthen you. If you turn to Exodus 19.4 Exodus 19.4 We read, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. So we've seen how God has provided for Ruth, and we've seen how um, God is a God who will be with you. He is a God who will not forsake you. He's a God who will provide for you. He's a God who will guide you. He's a God who will lift you. He's a God who will meet your need. God will not let you down. He will not fail you. He will provide for you. He will help you. He will bless you. He will provide. And you're okay. So keep close to him. If your enemies are after you, keep close to God. If you are wondering what the future holds tomorrow, keep close to God. If you keep close to him, he will be there with you and you will be okay. So be at peace today, my friend. Rest and know that God is with you. Okay, God bless you. We're going to pray. Father, we thank you that you're a God of mercy and a God of love. And so, Father, I give you the praise, I give you the glory, and I give you the honor. And so, God, I thank you for this. And I pray for this Bible study that it will be a blessing to any who listen to it. I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening and God bless.